Hey guys, Ash here from C4E Tech and today in this video, let's take a look at some quick tips and tricks for the OnePlus 3. Most of these should be applicable to other OnePlus devices running Oxygen OS as well. So without further ado, let's get started. I'm sure you guys know that the OnePlus 3 has a manual camera mode. Here you can tap to focus and then drag to set a dedicated exposure point. It's especially useful in those scenarios where you need to have different points of focus and exposure. You can also use the volume keys as a shutter button to shoot a picture or even start or end video recordings. The next one is quite well known. Under buttons from the settings menu, you get to choose between on-screen and capacitive keys. Now, depending on your last device's key layout, whether it was a Nexus or a Samsung, if you need to, you can swap the buttons at the bottom. Not just the virtual keys, but even the capacitive ones. You can set shortcuts for, say, double tapping the home button. I have it set it to launch the camera, mimicking Samsung's quick launch functionality. I've also set the left capacitive key to open shelf on long press. Oh yeah, shelf. Hitting that small icon at the bottom lets you add quick contacts and even widgets here. You can also access shelf with a quick swipe right from the home screen. It also displays weather information. If you're not a fan of the shelf feature, long press anywhere on the home screen, hit customize and you can disable it. Additionally, you get the option to toggle quick search and quick notifications here. Swipe up and you get a Google Nav, that's quick search for you. Swipe down and you pull down the notification bar. This is especially helpful when using the OnePlus 3 single-handed. Now that we are in the notification bar, it's worth noting that you can drag the tiles to rearrange the quick toggles. The night mode option here is worth a mention. It turns the screen warm and makes it easier to read in the dark, maybe in bed at night. Long pressing any of these quick toggles takes you to the relevant settings screen. Display in this case. Here you can set adaptive brightness, you can adjust the color balance, make the screen cooler or warmer. You can also adjust the level of warmth for the night mode and then there is an option to set pressing the power button twice to launch the camera like with Nexus phones. We also get ambient display. With this setting turned on, you can wave your hand over the proximity sensor right above the display to quickly see information on the lock screen. Proximity wake causes the screen to wake as the phone's picked up. Now back to the customize options, swipe and you get to how the Google search bar appears or even disable the search bar entirely. Swipe again and you get to choose the icon pack. Out of the box you'll only have the default icon pack but there are tons of free ones available in the Play Store and you can download them and you can select them from there and the size of the icons can also be adjusted here. Talking about size, another quick swipe leads to setting the grid size for the app draw. Now, I'm sure you're familiar with the recent apps carousel. Scroll to the end and the brush icon there helps you clear all background processes. The settings cog takes you directly to app management. The customization option under settings also gets us a few neat features. For example, dark mode. Thanks to the AMOLED display here, not only does this look cool, it's power efficient too. You also get to change the accent colors. Personally, I prefer leaving them bright yellow or green. Even the LED notification colors can be customized and the notifications can be controlled at a per app level. That's quite a lot of granular control here. The status bar option lets you remove icons that you don't want to see on the status bar up top. The alert slider to the left lets you allow only priority notifications or quickly turn your phone silent. From the alert slider option under settings, you can customize the way this works. For example, I generally prefer leaving the repeat callers option enabled. This allows the call through if the same person calls for a second time in a 15 minute window. And then there's the gestures option. With this turned on, you can do things like double tap to wake, which I frankly feel is redundant given that it's easier to set a fingerprint up and touch the scanner to wake the device and jump right onto the home screen. That said, there are a few others including launching the camera and toggling the flashlight on or off. The last one on the list for today is the battery percentage option from the battery settings. Tap the battery icon to the top right and you get to choose what you want. How the battery stats on the status bar gets displayed. You can also select the battery saver option using the three dot menu right next to it. So I guess that's it for this video. Did you learn something new? If you did, give this video a thumbs up. 
And if you know something that I missed, let me know in the comments below. And for more videos like this, hit that subscribe button down below if you haven't already. If you do want to help the channel out, consider changing your Flipkart or Amazon bookmarks to Unstead Container Affiliate ID. And that's it. Thanks a lot for watching. Till next time, this is Ash here from C4 Retech, signing off. You guys have a great day. Bye-bye now.